Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Vincent Schwenk and this is a Voronoi Fracture tutorial video. This is original from my Patreon-like database and I recorded this video back in 2020. But I thought it would be nice to actually start to share some of the old videos with you and just upload them on YouTube so that everyone can watch it free. And especially this video, anyway, someone on YouTube exactly made the same tutorial, so I can also give the original away for free. So I hope you enjoy and have fun watching the video. And yeah, I would be also always happy if someone supports me on Patreon. So thank you very much and enjoy. In this month, I wanted to talk about the Voronoi Fracture and what we can do with it. Um, the thing is, I had something in my mind, but it was really very difficult to come to in a point where I liked my render and still I'm not really happy with the results. So you can see I made a lot of different things and I tried out a lot of different stuff and this is only a little of it. Here are some more from my tests. And yeah. I think there's a lot of stuff which you can learn, but I'm really curious how you can apply this technique to your renders, because as I said, I'm not 100% convinced with my work myself. So well, my thoughts on this tutorial was, this is like the product shot part 2, and at this time I don't want to spend too much time on modeling the object, I want to spend more time on the, on the setup. So overall I was starting with this Kinto coffee um, cup. Um, I'm going into cinema and here's already my final scene from the other one. But let's get there by step by step. So first things first, improve a bit of your modeling skills. And overall this is quite easy and therefore I will try to go like as quick as possible so you can, we can come to the interesting stuff. So overall. I know the cup has something around a radius of 4 cm and it's like 18 cm or something high. So this is the overall um, Kinto box. By the way, I will quickly show it to you here because I'm having the uh, Kinto one in front of me. But in general, if you need a nice coffee tumbler, this is a really cool thing. So that's the guy and they have lots of different colors. Let's go for the this one. And yeah, you, you can see... That's quite easy to model, so therefore I'll just copy my, well first of all I don't need this empty scene and this is the whole size of the cup and I will start with my bottom, so I'm just eyeballing, so if you want to do it precisely you just have to get a ruler and find out the right amount. So I'm converting the sky, then I'm going to my loop selection, so I'm pressing UL and into my lines and I'm selecting this one. And it has to go a little bit down because we want to shrink down our bottom loop. So I select that and press T to scale it down and let's scale it down like 20%. So you can see, but the bottom one is still not that high. So I will select my from the top and let's pull that guy down to something like that. Again, I'm just eyeballing to speed up everything. So then i am working with a subdivision so we make a low poly version and then we have a high poly version there so i am having my base object here and when i'm turning on the subdivision you can see everything is blurred out and smooth and we don't want that because we don't want to we want to emphasize the edges of this um shape so overall let's first of all decrease our offset we need a very small set because the obje object itself is quite small so 0.05 is nice and we only need like two subdivisions because we have subdivision surface here as well and now you can see I don't have a subdivision down here well we can then decrease the angle of our threshold and now we are having also some subdivisions here so if I turn now back on my subdivision surface everything looks like I want so quite smooth and let's have a quick look to compare this thing. And overall, I think the angle down there is still too sharp. So the good thing is you can easily adjust it because everything is low poly. You can just here select the loop, press T, scale down a bit. And let's turn back on our subdivision level. Perfect. So that is my base of the shape. Now I would also say that's too small so we can easily adjust this again and I only have to select my top 
just pull this up a bit more and I'm pressing KL to give myself two loop cuts in here so all the segments have round about the same size, size which is like always nice. So cool, that's my base. So let's call that base and then I'm copying my cylinder and I'll just drag the uh, cylinder into my base to just have the same PSR and then I just need to move it up and the height, mm, let's say like two and a half, three centimeter, three centimeter or two and a half. Let's go for two and a half, 2.5. Um, so let's check this guy out, press C con to convert it and then we need a subdivision surface and we drag it into the, the subdivision surface and you can see again now everything is too bevelly and round therefore I'll just copy my bevel deformer from the previous one and overall this is already quite much what I want and now we only need to adjust our um, deformation in the middle so UL to select my loops and by the way we have too many loops so I'll just go back to my cylinder and I only I don't need so many segments I only need actually I only need two so nice let's convert this guy copy everything from below and I'll put the bevel in there and the subdivision surface in here. That's nice. So we have the same guy here, but now we only have two subdivisions in the height and I can easily select my top one and scale this part down. And you can see it's not exactly at the middle. So we have to move this guy a little bit up. So something like that. And let's see in the subdivision how it looks. And you can see now we don't have a bevel here. Let's see if we can fix that by decreasing the angle and yeah, so 25 degrees is an overall sink. It can go smaller and one is even enough. So yeah, this looks all nice and smooth. So ever if you want to make a project with a coffee tumbler, then you have the guy and you can use it. And I of course will share it with you. So now we only need the lid. So that's the base and again I'm copying my cylinder and just I'll piece art into this guy so it's at the same position and the height is now smaller. Let's see, yep, if this guy is 2.5, 2 might be a good thing. And therefore I will again just copying this whole setup and I'll drag the cylinder in there, drag the bevel deform and I'll delete that guy. So. We have a good start. Then let's have a look back at the image. We only need one height subdivision. So let's turn that guy off and the height sub segment only one. And press C to convert this guy. Oh wait, actually I just copy. I'll copy everything because I also need the smallest part on the top. So press now C to convert this and pressing UL for loop selection, going down, going from my loop and let's make everything down there and this is definitely too high. So I'll just select my whole object and scale it down by 30%. Actually the top one could be like 1% bigger. So we have a little bit of an overlap like as you can see, the top one looks a bit bigger. Oh, just a little bit more. Yeah, this looks nice. As a last thing, I copied and the height is really thin of this top object, perhaps 2.2. And let's see if we move the cylinder up here and also increase the scale. So we'll match it and let's compare it. So overall, I think this is kind of nice. Ours is too not high enough. So I'll just roughly scale my base a little bit up so it matches more. But again, if you have to model like precisely, you have to measure everything or you could take this as a screenshot and put it into cinema and really directly work on that. But, I mean, this is just 
for demonstration purposes and this thing is called Kinto and that's that and save. So the modeling part was super quick now. So let's start with a new scene and I need a floor. Cool. So that's the first thing. And I want a hole in the floor and the quickest way for me to do that is with a displacer end and let's put the displacer into the floor and I didn't need that much and also this floor is too big I will scale like everything down by 50% then displacer let's displace it by 5 centimeters and we just need a color so we need a oops, sorry not a gradient we just need a simple color and then we need a fall off in this placer and I will use just a sphere as a fall off end. You can see now we are displacing in the wrong direction so I will go negative 10 centimeters and you can see we created here a little hole and by the way let's also already copy our Kinto guy copy and paste it into our new fracture test so we can roughly see how big our set should be and overall all I think still the floor is too big so let's go mm, yeah something like that and I want the field a bit smaller and this placement like a bit more minus seven so we have a hole here so everything is looking a bit more imperfect and we have like um, yeah something interesting. So then let's start with a cube. So that is our first thing which is gonna break. And well depending on your f render format which you want to work like if you want to go one by one or 45 or I don't know what so you should already keep that in mind for example if you want to have like a perspective composition like I was doing in here then it would be nice to render and to already think about your render size which is was here 4 by 5 so you can go with that or we can go with more like the cup thing mm, don't know yet we will see in the process so for now I will keep my cube cubicle and let's go for clean numbers for 100 5 and 100 so object one then let's go for Voronoi fracture and about the Voronoi fracture I actually don't use it that much or I didn't use it much till now and after it took me like two days or one and a half days to play around with everything and try to find a cool solution for my design I still would say it's not my favorite tool of cinema but you can do some nice stuff with this and I think it is good to know it but again it's not my favorite part because there are quite some issues where we will find I think the one issue is that the noise is very, very hard to um, direct and still everything looks kind of computer generated it's really hard to make it very um, random and the edges are not perfect and so on and so on let's start from the beginning so first of all I wanted to work with two layers so to increase the complexity of my design because I was th I found out it looks better to have two also then you can create some interesting effects which were started you can use glass and below the grass glass there is also some fracturing that's why we start with that so overall easy cube for now and then we'll go into um, our dynamics and add a rigid body and into the floor we need a collider body I will already tell you that stuff is going to fall down because we have so many segments and fracture and everything therefore I'll create a floor and if you create a floor nothing ever will dynamically fall through this floor so all your objects will be stopped here which is good so let's also give the floor a collider body and hide it to the place put it 90 degrees and put it somewhere in the middle so this is the first very 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 first start and you can now get a simulation tag for the Kinto rigid body 
And one thing which perhaps not everyone knows, which is the first thing which you can learn in this tutorial, when I press play now, the Kindle will fall apart. Well, first of all, nothing is happening because in my base scene, I don't have gravity. So, gravity, let's press play. So, yeah, you can see my Kinto is falling apart and we don't want that, but there's an easy fix for that. And this is again a cinema bug where you have to like, yeah, I don't know if you also have to say, but going into the dynamic tag, you can choose instead of collision apply to children, you can create a compound collision shape. So everything is calculated as one object. So now it will stay together, which is nice. So then let's see what we have and we can play the simulation just like several times. We are super quick now. So first of all, nothing is happening because, well, the first thing is the floor. I'm sure this is not going to be a static mesh. The shape calculation is automatic, so he doesn't know that the floor has a hole. So let's switch that into static mesh. And now you can see everything is breaking down here. So this is a cool start, very first start. And the base layer can be actually quite rough because we don't see a lot of stuff from that. I have played around with so many different setups here to give a variation. So I will show you just, let's start with the random effector. The cool thing is you can put effectors into the Voronoi factor and in the random effector, I only want to affect the scale on Y. So all the objects are a different height. When they play now, we have this nice um, effect here. I don't know if it's too much, but we will see later. Then let's also, when we're starting here, let's have a look in our dynamic settings. And we are working in a quite small scale, therefore our export scale needs to be definitely smaller. So I'll go for 0 0.05 here. And in my experience, I knew that I needed more subframes later on. Let's go with 10 and 15. So that's a good start. Then what is very important? You can see that this uh, fracture is quite jiggling and jumping. We need to drain out all the energy which is there in there. And you can go into the force from the Voronoi fracture and into the, <coughs> the linear damping and the angular damping. And you can put that to 99. And yeah, not 100. Sometimes stuff in cinema gets weird when it's full. So 99, that's good, that's a good start. Then we started with the basic shape, then in the source. Let's have a quick look about how you can generate your points. This is a uniform generation, so they will roughly be about the same size. And then the point amount, you can type in your points, like, I don't know, 122. And we can press, pl pl press play. And the simulation is still quite fast because the Voronoi Fracture was also written newly. So I think they're using multi core here, but I'm not 100% sure. But you can go with really high numbers and it's still quite performing. So I'm 555 and you can see it's really fast. So let's try for, I don't know, 1500 and let's save just in case because it's getting high. Let's go for animation 17 and this is fracture. Fracture point zero one point C for D. Nice. And let's press a play and see how quick everything is. And you can see it is still quite or relatively fast. Overall, what I was doing a lot, I was directly working with Redshift hand in hand to see what I'm doing or to get a better feeling or look and look and feel. So in general, my tutorials are split in the animation and then design part, which is in the designs mostly Redshift, but I will directly go into Redshift here. Let's start the IPR. Then just a quick Thing here, my whole light setup is more adjusted for a horizontal setup. So now everything in here looks very flat and 
I mean, if you're using Octane or something else, you can probably just follow me here and I'll go into my camera. But you can see the scene is not 100% responsive anymore because we want to try to keep it as quick as possible. So, oh, let's go with 500 and also actually let's already turn Wait, oh, my camera is really spinned a lot like crazy. So where are we now? Minus 90 and 0. So now we have a f top view and the Kinto will be turned around by 90 degrees. So let's press play and have a look for a frame in the middle. And also overall I have 200 frames but we are working in for still so I only need a few to start the anime um, the simulation here so back to the light I need to turn everything around by 90 degrees and let's see so or yeah something like that would already work and I'm just now very quickly quickly trying to adjust my light setup here so i'd see a bit better with what i'm working here and you can see what i'm doing here this is my first light and my second light will be a bit stronger and i'm using a hdri to fill my blacks and i'll put it on to the thing here so you can see there is a maximum noise in there and I will scale it a bit down because it's too big for me here. And I will go with a brighter tone. So nice. And the guys who are not having redshift, sorry for that quick like detour, but perhaps it's nice to see. And for the Kinto, I will create quickly these presets and I'll go with aluminium. Actually, I can go into my base material and just copy my bump map and go into the aluminium material and paste it in there. And just connect the bump shader with the overall bump input. And the bump amounts also way too much, 0 0.02 or 4. So we get a bit of imperfection in the roughness here, like that. I mean, it's just for previewing. So you can see we have the very lit is also aluminium and then we need a black, black plastic and I'll just copy my aluminium material and put that on these two guys and instead of aluminium I'll go into plastic and turn it very down and also I'm decreasing the reflectivity and increasing the roughness and it's a bit too dark let's go a bit brighter yeah I would say that's something to work with so this really helped me to develop a composition and to try our different techniques and work everything together so nice. then i can hide my light again pause the render and i will switch back to my um, startup workspace the thing is about the voronoi fracture the point generator again as i said is a uniform thing then we have another thing called inverse normal and normal and the normal map, it starts to, it, in the center, it's very small and the pieces get bigger to the outside and the invert normal, it's the opposite. So depending on what you want, you can choose one of these ones. And for me, the normal one is really good. So I had very many fragments where the Kintu will hit and the rest was not that fragmented. Then let's go like this. And I don't want this many fragments. And overall, I want to add more fragments and you can add together a different generator and that helps you to make everything a bit more unique. So I have 20, 22 fragments from this, this generator and then with the, inver with the normal I have 100. So I have way more in the center but still I have a lot of stuff in here. Then overall you can also transform your... Um, wait, let's transform the other ones. I think they are easier to see. You can see now they are spread out there and you can spread them out in the Y and X, X axis and the Z. So you can see the fragments are getting longer and longer. And yeah, these are two things. Then 
You can also drag in objects to create fractures. Therefore, I'll just go with a lower number in here again. And let's say I'm creating a blank Kinto. So turn that around. And I say this is my um, for the fracture one. And I can just grab and drop any object in here. And I'll hide this anyways. And you can see now it is creating fragments where I dragged in the cylinder. And I think this is also very nice to get this very graphical approach of everything. Let's see how it looks if we disable the rest. So yeah, we have now a super graphical um, style, which is nice. So let's give it a save and quickly press play and I would say this is also definitely something where you could develop a style it could be a wood or something let's again have a quick look into our redshift scene and let's see how this looks yeah would be nice would be nice so I will save this for you and I will go with this version up and it would be nice to see if you can already do something with that um, about shading and everything, we will talk in the other design tutorial. But we want to approach more like this broken glass or fracture ground thing thingy. So therefore, let's go back into the fracture and reactivate both of both of my um, fractures. Then I want to show you. A third thing, if you're having Cineversity, you can install in the Cineversity right, something with paint, CV Paint Fracture. And with this tool, you can paint your own fracture pass, which is already also quite nice. So that really helps to really art direct what you want. For example, here a lot of pieces, here some pieces, and they should stay big, and I don't know, some here. And yeah, this definitely is a interesting pattern. And things now, you can also combine this with the ones we previously made. So now everything is mixed up together and we have a very interesting pattern of elements. But I would say the graphical ones in here don't fit, so let's deactivate this guy. Let's also go to the random effector and I'm sure the effect is too strong. Let's make it a bit less, so point 0.2. Let's have a quick play how this runs. I think this is a very good starting point and we don't want to go more into detail here. We'll go that into into the top layer. So I would say I'm happy with my base layer and I'm duplicating my fracture and this time I want a very thin um, uh, plate or cube. So the fracture objects will be thinner and then they'll break better. Because the breaking gets very bad if we activate now more details. So overall, let's go into the second fracture. And I will delete the point, the painted one, and I'll just create more uh, objects here. Uh, perhaps too much. Because overall I think it's nice that we have the big chunks here. So perhaps let's actually keep them bigger. And you can also add like a third distribution. And we will go again for normal. And this time I'll choose a very tiny normal amounts you can see we only fracture very much in the middle and i want to scale that a bit up and i want way more fractures let's go for 300 so we are having now two layers on top of each other and we are having a decent amount of fractures so the system is still running very good and let's, for example, also tilt the camera a bit. I like that it has a bit of an angle 
and quickly go into my Redshift view and have a view in here. I think this is already a very interesting base. I think the pieces are still too big compared to the size of the bottle. So we need to work on that. Therefore we need to increase the amount of the fracture. So let's go with 800 and 20 and 200. And the one in the center should be more, 1,500 and 1 1.8. So yeah. Now we are having really many fracture objects and let's see how responsive cinema is to that. It's still quite decent though it gets a bit slow and for the tutorial purpose I will decrease the numbers a little bit so we won't have to wait that long but let's have a look on this guys. And also what I was doing then in my testing, I only had this 20 frames and then I was always selecting one thing and I was caching everything out so that went quicker to cache without the preview and you have a few seconds where you can, I don't know, do something, get a drink or whatever. Yeah, I would say that is definitely something from where we want to continue working. But again, I think we have too many objects. Also because we'll start to um, give everything a bit more detail. So I will shrink the numbers. And then we had the source tab. Um, in the object, by the way, there's this offset fragment. And sometimes if the pieces won't fall apart, it's good to give everything a little bit of, of an offset. So the dynamic tech can work better if you have issues, if something's stuck. But for now everything works, so I won't have to touch that. And we want to mostly work on the detailing. So let's enable detailing. And everything is going crazy. So let's play with some values. First of all, I want way more geomet geometry, therefore I can decrease my edge length because this is like a quite a small thing. I would say 1.5. Yeah, this is giving me more detail and everything or even smaller 1.2. But be careful with this number, it gets really slow. Then I want to have a noise surface. First of all, the strength is way too much. Let's drop the number down to two. And we have now some issues and we can relax the inside edges. Let's give some iterations in there and let's increase the iteration amount for the pre prevention strength. So the artifacts will get less. And yeah, my objects are decent but yeah not really perfect there are many issues and because we have so many objects it's definitely impossible to bevel the edge and we will always have these very sharp edges in the render and we can only fix that by giving everything a fake bevel in Octane or in Redshift. But yeah, it's impossible to bevel this um, sites with this amount of detail and geometry. Then the scale of the object is also too big. Let's scale that down so the frequency of the noise is smaller. And at this point it would be really nice to be able to blend two different noises, like one big noise for the overall shape and one small noise for little details. So, but now the edges are starting to break off. Let's make this even smaller and see how the result will be. And you can see everything is getting more transformed now and perhaps I can increase the strength back to three again. Everything is looking now way more organic and 
Let's see if this thing will still play. Yeah, it's still doing. It's not that fast, but I mean, it's okay. Also, because we are working on a still, we can ramp up all the values and like give everything a bit too, like more details and more fragments than in an animation where you would be really screwed. I try to give everything even more details and these little fragments, we can do that with the Voronoi fracture because then they it would be crazy, but there's a nice way to create this little things and we won't need X particles. So therefore I'll save this scene and I will quickly create a new scene. I will create like a very small sphere with just a few segments. And I'll create a Voronoi fracture for my sphere. And how many fractures do we want? Let's see, like 14. 14, yeah, and let's copy that and paste it and convert it. So I have now my fractured object in here and you can select them all now and there's this little nice tool which is called Arrange. And again, everything is selected and now all the objects will be placed in one line with a distance of five centimeters. If, ju if I just press apply, we can see now what we got there. These are some really nice fragments for like stone, tiny little details, broken, splitter. We will use them later. But let's also have a quick look how we can work on this guy. And I will activate the detailing. And so everything in here is a bit more broken and detailed and let's go back to the arrange tool so arrange and apply and yeah we are hmm. they are more detailed and have some more edges but i don't think we need that i think we will be fine with this lower low polyer version so let's copy our low poly fracture objects and go back into my fracture scene and the scene is really quite slow so on the bottom part we don't need this many sub subdivisions or segments so this is my floor and yeah so that's totally fine now playing around with the values and you will later see how what what you like or not so that's now faster and top part first of all gets less um, object as as well so 15 instead of 20 and 500 and let's also crank up the maximum edge length of everything so we have way less geometry in here and everything should be a bit faster and yeah looks better to me now so let's call this by the way top and the other one bottom and now my fracture objects come in here and we don't need the cylinder in here anymore and now we need to scale them down the fracture objects like a lot let's see so perhaps something like that so these little pieces will give a lot of extra detail to everything so then let's create a cloner and put all the fragments into the cloner and the cloner needs to be smaller and we need way more pieces so not per step endpoint ah uh, here we go so there they are and then let's go into the cloner and go to random that's the first thing then second thing obviously we will need a random deformer put them in here and 
On Z we need like 10 and on X 10 and on Y 1 or 15. Let's see how they are spread. A bit more 1818 and rotation will just give 999999 and also like a random scale and I think we should go smaller than bigger. 0.4 so we have these little little debris elements here and actually I don't want to give them any um, Y randomness so therefore we can place everything better so there's no intersection and the Kinto needs to go a bit more up and let's give everything a safe incremental so Let's make the trick what I said. So select your cache, bake all, and you can see it's still quite fast. And I will get a water. And I, of course, forgot to give my cloner a dynamic tap as well. So we'll clear all the cache, bake everything down, and I'll be back in a second. So, to be fair, this took longer than I thought. It took just a few minutes but we are really having a lot of elements and yeah they are still behaving quite good so because in some other tests everything was falling through everything and we had a lot of pieces like falling down we have some here but that's still quite good so and also, where I was struggling a lot is because usually I don't, or I figured out that I don't do designs with that type of perspective. I like it more when we have depth and when the objects are more like in space. Um, that's why it was also very hard to work like this for me. But we can obviously already see that our pieces are way too big and perhaps that's also why this thing calculated good and they were not falling through everything but we would definitely need to recalculate that then overall i think we can have more details and like brokenness in the edge you can see here now this is a bit more displaced even though perhaps it's here a bit too much Oh, so this comes more in the design part then. So let's quickly go back into my startup menu. The fragments would have to be at least 50% smaller. Let's go with 60%. That looks already quite small. And I'll clear the cache and I will go for less clones. So 44, 44 by 44, which is a much, but yeah. Then we could calculate that, but let's first see what needs to be done. What else can be done? For example, we can make the hole bigger in the ground. And I was also playing a lot, a lot with that, how different effects approach also when you make the hole more narrow and let's make it more and then you have to think about that we have a floor on the bottom let's see we need to adjust this this can go down so let's see what we get there and let's also additionally to get more variation Go and create the paint fracture in here. And I'll try to paint one line through the Kinto. But you can see everything is already getting very slow. There's not much of response happening in here. We will have to wait a bit. Top part. And then what I was saying, we need more detail. By the way, the rest I didn't uh, use. You can glue everything together, but I didn't have to do that in my composition. Ah, oh, yeah, but there's one thing which I want to talk about additionally for the animation. But let's first go into the detailing and let's 
let's see if we can increase everything. So I'll inc increase the strength of my noise and I have more detail, so the maximum edge length is smaller. And yeah, this is already way more displaced and I think this is cool. Then the thing is what I want to talk about as well is you can change the um, animation type from trigger to on collision and we will do that and both layers now only start to react when something reacts on them which is very nice for animation but perhaps for the still it's also something nice let's see what's happening we are pressing pressing play here kind of already everything is starting to collapse because also the small stones are falling on all pieces i don't know what will happen everything in there let's see yeah also one thing why it took me so long to come up with this is because i had so many iterations and everything like really went very quick very slow so you sit there and wait and just like change some values and then you need to calculate everything again and it's like nah, i don't know perhaps this perhaps that and something really interesting happened here that's really kind of weird very weird actually let's create a second camera and this is like our alternative look camera dude that's really weird here but why not perhaps this is the look you want to go for so therefore i'll save you this guy and i'll go for save incremental and let's quickly change into my ratchet view and also it kind of could be funny to see this guy by the way i'm duplicating just my base material and switching the color and I'll put another color onto my bottom layer so you can see what is bottom and what is top. And that's why I originally created two layers because sometimes everything is fracturing apart. And then you can see the second fractures and that's really giving me like a nice second level of detail. Yeah, it's something. The fracture parts also are still a bit too big. And I would say it could be nice to have thinner pieces here because they still are very thick in here. So therefore I'll go back into my normal camera and I want to show you like another thing, how you can art direct everything in here. So therefore I will quickly deactivate my cloner so everything goes a bit quicker. And so I'll go into my top one and I'll select a plane effector and I can't type anymore. So go into my top one, play one plane one and the plane effector shouldn't move anything around he only should scale everything down here we go by minus 0.7 so each object is fractured down but so again i will go into my detailing and make the objects way less detailed even perhaps four, so it's not that slow anymore. Then I don't want to go on collision, I'll go back immediately so the whole simulation starts. But let's say you want to create a design where you have these big chunks on the bottom and the smaller ones on top. And on the top ones we have this plane effector and in the fall off I will give myself again a spherical field and I think it's way too huge. And let's make this guy bigger make a bigger fall off you can art direct also all the plates like you want so you are having really a lot of a lot of a lot of possibilities about everything that's why i said it took so long for me to come up with a bit something then what we also at this point would have to do is we need to create a random effector and call this color and we will use that for the color user data in Redshift later or I don't know if Octane can do that. So I'm selecting both of my guys and no I can't, I have to select each one. Put the color one in here and the color one into the other one and now I only want to affect the color in color mode, affect color and I want to add them. So we will have that later. But let's see our scene. So 
yeah, perhaps this is something you are up to. For example, here are really happening some nice moments, I would say, if you have these big chunks which are not falling down and you have some gaps in there. And therefore, let's also again jump back and forth and go into my red view. Yeah, also definitely a like an interesting approach. Could be something. Then let's go back into my startup theme. And one last thing which I want to talk about. Let's go back to frame zero. I only want a top layer now and we don't need the cube also. Well, first I'll save you an incremental for that. So let's get rid of these guys. And my top layer, I also don't want the plane effector. So all the pieces should stay big. And now we can move up our floor a little bit and also I want to create a very small hole okay and this was too much so let's go back to minus three because the thing I want is like a f bit of a more like as if the Kinto would crack through these pieces and have a look from the top yeah this could be something as well but I would say now it feels a bit too thin but in this case I would say the it looks kind of interesting so also definitely a option to play around with so let's make a cut here and Thank you very much for listening to part one. Bye bye.